Hi guys, Max from High on Android.com, where we get <sighs> on Android every day. Anyway, I have been literally daily driving this for over a month now. I've been daily driving it so much, I am tired of using this phone. Anyway, let's go ahead and do a full review so I can go on to another phone. Let's go do this, baby. With plethora number of new Android smartphones being released these days, it is sometimes very hard to find the phone you really like. Now, if you're looking for the biggest phablet phone, Huawei's new Mate 9 may just be your newfound love. All right, guys, so I did write the whole script, but uh, I don't like scripted videos. So that's all the scripted video you're going to get. I'm going to try to descript the scripted video so let's do this all right i'll just have my script over here so i know where to go in this review i'm gonna go ahead and cover the good bad and most importantly who is this phone for first of all let me go ahead and talk about uh, what i like about this phone uh it is obviously a big phone it's a 5.9 inch device uh the note 7 is 5.7 inches this is 5.9 inches. I love big phones. Uh, this phone is a little bit too big for me. And I've actually dropped it uh, about five times. I have not broken the screen. Let me give you a close up. All right, you can see that part bend it. That was like the worst thing I could find. Uh, I've dropped it on concrete. I've dropped it on wood, glass. Uh, concrete was probably the worst, but uh, this is all the scratches I've got. The only actually scratch I got was this. So I'm not sure if I got lucky. Um, I'm sure I was lucky. <laughs> I'm lucky that the screen didn't break. Oh yeah, let's go into the details here. Now this phone does have IR blaster, which is very nice. And a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Ooh, there's a little piece of hair. Yuck. So this is like somebody's pubic hair. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It's probably just eyebrow hair. We'll have to do DNA analysis. All right, it's also got the famous Leica dual camera setup, just like its predecessor P9, which gives you its aperture mode, which is really cool. Uh, F2.2, not bad. The aperture mode definitely is worth getting this phone alone for, which I'll have more on. I really love the circle fingerprint sensor. It works fast. Love it. Uh, design itself. I think this is the nicest Huawei designed phone. I mean, it is nearly flawless. You got uh, USB type C. Now it is dual stereo speaker, sort of. Um, it's actually got tweets here and you got the mids and the bass coming out of here. All right, sound itself is Pretty loud, it's not super loud. Definitely having the tweeters over here helps. Let me actually play a song real quick for you guys. So that's with it all off. And that's the tweets. And then that's the mids. So that's really cool, you get the tweets. Uh, I think the ACC was at M9 that had it. All right, very similar to that. Pretty good. You got rotatable UI. The UI is something that is not my favorite, but uh, after using it a month, I've sort of got used to it. Um, you got all your shortcuts there. Um, notification there. All right, um, since it's a big phone, um, there is stuff like floating dock stuff to help you. You can even make the screen smaller. Um, you got a little pie control there, which is really cool. They even got toggle for 4G. So if you want to get off 4G LT data, that should put you in HSPA or 3G. Oh, it's still on 4G. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, now it's in reg the, the regular 4G. 
it was actually HSPA, so that did work. It'll drop you to HSPA+, plus, which is nice. Now, battery life is excelente. It's a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Probably the largest battery you'll find on a phone, big phone like this. So far, I have zero issues with battery. And also, you can enable the ultra battery mode, which isn't black and white like the Samsung mode, but it still saves you a ton of battery. It only lets you run six of your favorite apps. Right, um, you're not limited to a certain app. You can use any app, and this will save you a ton of battery life. I've had like five percent battery life activated to ultra power and been able to go for a few more hours. So this is very useful, but you're not gonna really run out of the battery. All right, let's talk about the screen next. The screen itself is a 1080p. It gets pretty damn bright. Uh, IPS, All right, LCD. Um, not bad. Actually, Huawei Mate 8 from last year and Mate 9. I don't know why. Huawei is the only company that has pretty good viewing angles when it comes to LCD. It's usable. I mean, you guys know I love 1440p. If you guys might watch my previous reviews. This is probably the one of the best phones with the best 1080p screen that I could sort of live with 1080p. Now with that said, it's a 5.9 inch and if you actually need a higher resolution, this is probably not for you, all right? But it will save you battery life. All right, this is also a dual SIM uh, device. You can hot swap SIM cards on the go. You can use up to two SIM cards. Now you could put two dual SIM, one, two there, or you could put one SIM card and one micro SD. All right, so it's a dual purpose. I really like this sturdy metal um, because sometimes I bend it and it won't go in and it'll mess it up. I really like they put uh, actual hard aluminum, aluminum for this. So that's really nice. I like the dual SIM feature. Now you'll be able to receive calls from both numbers, um, send calls, SMS from both numbers, however you like. Uh, as far as 4G LT data, you will have to choose between the SIM card number one or number two. You can switch it, just you're gonna have to go dig into settings, switch to your other number. I wish there was actually a phone that you could take advantage of two 4G LT signals, all right? That will be in the future phone, but yeah, dual SIM feature, pretty awesome for globe trotters. I've tried the dual SIM, and but you know, I'd rather just carry two phones. All right, this does have its Gearin 960 processor. How fast is it? I've had zero performance. Actually, I've had a few performance issues, all right? Overall performance, very, very good. Switching apps, very, very fast. Uh, let's actually run in 2-2 benchmark real quick. And you can see right away, and 2-2 benchmark runs very, very, very smooth. Um, you know, phones like up to like the S7 Edge will run this part of Antutu very, very smooth. Anything faster uh, than last year's S7 Edge, you're going to be able to run this smooth. So if you can run this part of the Antutu pretty smooth, then me, you got a pretty awesome processor. Let's go ahead and fast forward and see what number we get. There you have it, 139,000, all right? Uh, in comparison, my Galaxy S7 Edge gets about 130,000. So in terms of performance, I mean, apart from benchmarks, you should be good to go. Now, I got this phone for free. I could make the script, make it say, performance is great, everything runs great. Yeah, but um, we're gonna descript it, be honest about it. Um, I've actually honestly used this for about a month and for those of you following me on Periscope You know that I've been using this phone a lot because I've been using this pretty much for every scope Talking about scoping Periscope, which is a video streaming app. Uh, if you guys haven't joined my Periscopes Come and check it out sometimes uh, It is basically a low-resolution streaming app um, You can stream now if I had trouble with Periscope and uh, one of the trouble is when I'm live streaming from one location, let's say here on one Wi-Fi or one 4G LT signal, I'm good. But as soon as I start scoping outside, walking around, 
when the phone starts switching radios, uh, towers, it starts freezing sometimes after maybe 10 minutes in, 20 minutes in, especially when I'm driving uh, or when I'm switching back from Wi-Fi to 4G LTE. I'm not sure what the issue is. It could be with the Periscope app, but it doesn't happen on my other phones. So I think it has something to do with the software on here. Also, when I watch YouTube videos, sometimes it will lag, even though I have perfect signal. For example, I have perfect signal here for GLTE. All right, so let's go to my Korean channel here. And it seems to be working just fine here. Well, I can't demonstrate here, but sometimes it does that. I'm just telling you because it happened to me a bunch of times. Um, and it was where I'm getting perfect 4G LTE, perfect Wi-Fi signals. I'm not sure what the issue is, but it happens. I just feel like this phone has not been tested for US market, US apps. Obviously, because Huawei is based in China and these phones are really marketed for China first and then the US. And Huawei, if you guys are listening, I think you guys should really test out the US apps such as Snapchat, Twitter, um, you know, Periscope. Make sure they work on the US first because as US customers, we expect these things to work out of the box. I mean, it's not a big issue. It doesn't happen all the time, but obviously it did happen to me, on, especially on Periscope all the time. That's one of the reasons I kept switching to another phone every time I Periscope. Moving on, other than that though, performance issues, I haven't seen it. Um, you know, it is a very good performance phone. So we will leave it at that and hopefully Huawei will address the issue and fix these hopefully software issues that can be fixed. All right, the coolest feature, the number one reason I would buy this phone, other than it's a big phone, uh, would be its camera, all right? The camera, I'm gonna tell you straight up, um, I got this phone for free, <laughs> um, but I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. In low lights, it's nowhere near Pixel S7 Edge or any of the flagships out there. In low light, it actually sucks. It sucks actually so bad uh, that I would just not use it in low light. It is that bad, both front and back. Front camera is even worse, but during great lighting, it's pretty awesome. All right, the aperture mode. I really love this mode. Let me go ahead and take a photo for you real quick using aperture mode. All right, look at that shot. Um, that's pretty good. I've had some, let me show you some other shots. All right, some shots like this. I mean, that blurring of the background, that nice bokeh, uh, it is pretty awesome on the Huawei Mate 9. Uh, especially like portrait shots like this. I mean, you would actually need a mirrorless DSLR camera with pretty fast lens to capture this. Of course, the a lot of you were telling me the edges are not sharp, but then again, photos for like Instagram and stuff, I mean, it's gonna really enhance your photos. So I really love the feature. Now, this aperture mode only works for close-up objects. You gotta be like three feet or closer. If you get any farther out, um, you can't take advantage of this. All right, stuff like that. Uh, nice photo, I put that on Instagram the other day. Now I can actually change the aperture. Let's say I wanna be able to see the background and I can go back like this and capture all of it. Or I can do it F9.0.95 and make it look like that. Oops, or you can blur out the front too. Um, so aperture effect alone, I really love it. All these other modes, I'm just gonna say straight out, they're pretty useless. Uh, there is a there is a pro mode. There's pro mode. I mean, all this other stuff. But one thing that I use the most often was the aperture mode. All right. As far as video, uh, OIS is pretty good on this this phone. All right. OIS is actually excellent eh? with 4K. The quality seems to suffer a little bit. So I'm gonna give you points uh, for that. But if you absolutely wanted the best daytime camera with extra bokeh effects, like a DSLR mirrorless camera with a big heavy lens, uh, this, the P9, Honor 8, all of it, or Honor 5X, you can't beat any of those. Uh, Honor 6X, sorry, the new one that came out. So really like that. At the same time, I think Huawei did fall short obviously with low light performance, but it's really hard to take good photos in low light. And in most cases, I'm using my DSLR or 
mirrorless camera anyways for low light. So if you take a lot of photos in daytime and you absolutely need the best daytime camera with bokeh effect, this is the phone to go for. All right, let's talk about the IR Blaster. All right, um, I did show you IR Blaster. One of the coolest features of its IR Blaster is that you don't have to use the app that comes with it. I don't even know what it is, but my favorite uh, app is the Peel Smart Remote, which I've been using since the S7 Edge, the S6, sorry. Uh, and I really like this remote. You can download it on the Play Store and it's 100% compatible. So you'll be able to use this to connect to your direct TV cable, all that good stuff. Really like that feature. All right, the coolest feature on this phone. Do you guys know what the coolest feature on this phone is that it comes with Amazon Echo Alexa inside the phone. All right, it doesn't work yet. Huawei will update the software, so that feature should be here shortly. But if you already have Amazon Echo, and one of my biggest problem is that I have the Amazon Echo upstairs and I really can't use it down here. They give you this little remote that you said, but I hate carrying that around. But if you could do it on this phone and connect it with my Amazon Echo upstairs, then I can use my phone to control Alexa from everywhere in my house without buying extra Amazon Echo units, right? So that's going to be an exciting feature, but obviously it's not on the phone yet as of this video. And I will definitely have a video on that. Okay, I don't want to make this review too long as usual. Um, so overall, who is this phone for? All right, we'll go script it here. I would say it is for those of you who really want to get the biggest 5.9 inch smartphone with excellent performance, uh, minus those minor issues that I had, great battery life, and can live with 1080p screen resolution. All right, while I'm not a biggest fan of the 1080p on a whopping 5.9 inch, after using this almost for a month, I would say it wouldn't matter too much. The screen on here is, the, the 1080p screen on the Mate 9 is superior to many other phones out on the market with 1080p. Now at $599, the US retail cost, I think this is a niche phone. It's definitely not phone for everybody. Definitely not the best phablet I've tried, but it is definitely the best daytime camera on a big phone that I've tried. If you absolutely need the biggest phablet size phone around 5.9, six inches, maybe over six inches too much for you, that is the sweet spot for you. Um, you're gonna love this phone, especially if you take a lot of photos in daytime. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can go wrong with it. Fast fingerprint sensor, you know, software pretty decent. We'll see if we can root it or not. But overall, that's my analysis. Basically, somebody who needs a big phone with a great daytime camera, great battery life, all right? But I do feel the timeline is a little bit awkward because Samsung's gonna announce the Galaxy S8, uh, which rumored to be 5.7 inches and 6.2 inches, all right? So it could be the next cool big phone. Also LG G6 is coming out. I think it's 5.7 inches. So you may wanna wait out till at least March uh, when all LG Samsung new phones are announced. By then, the price on this might go down. Basically, you'll have more choices. So wait until end of this month if you're gonna buy a phone, or at least March. This is February to March, I think it's like the worst time to buy a phone because new phones are gonna get announced. And once Snapdragon 835 equipped phones are announced, everything's gonna drop in price, you know, it's just, how tech works. Let's cut it short there. I've been daily driving this way too long. Again, my biggest complaint is that I can't use it uh, for Periscope when I'm walking around. And also I did have problems with Netflix. I don't know why when I cast uh, Netflix from my phone to my upstairs TV, there's like, there's like a minute lag sometimes. And it doesn't happen all the time. A lot of times there's a big, huge lag, like five to 30 seconds. Again, this has to do with testing the apps before you release it in the US market. Um, should be able to fix it with software. So Huawei, if you're listening, I would go through all the popular US apps, make sure it runs flawless, test out the Chromecast. Um, you, you know, I would even dedicate a whole team to testing US based applications. And as a consumer, if I'm watching Netflix every day and all my other phones never had this problem, trying to cast Netflix takes a minute to press and it starts lagging uh frustrates me 
frustrates the consumer. All right, that's it. Uh, hit the thumbs up. I'm gonna have some more videos. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, Periscope, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, be sure to tweet me. I'm there all the time. Uh, have a great day, folks. And as always, stay on Android. Click here to subscribe.